Well, Washington Post has been doing this great series on uh, basically political corruption in Washington. And uh, today's uh, version of that was a story about family members of politicians and how they benefit from those politicians and the earmark contracts that they give out uh, throughout their career. And it's a doozy. Now, they found 16 different instances of this. Now, of course, there are far more, and I'm going to bring one myself. But I want to give you four from the story that are really illustrative. First, we start with Senator Tim Johnson, Democrat of South Dakota. Uh, it turns out that he pushed for $4 million to go to the what is called the Starbase budget. Now, that's for education, etc. Well, who does Starbase employ? Oh, will you look at that? They employ Barbara Johnson, Tim Johnson's wife, at $80,000 a year. And, look, and since then, they've gotten an extra million dollars in Pentagon contract to monitor Starbase. Oh, will you look at that? Oh, funny how that works. In fact, her cons uh, group, uh, the Spectrum Group, which is a lobbying group, registered her as a lobbyist and on this particular issue. When they were caught red-handed on that, they're like, oh, did we meet, did, uh, we didn't mean to register her as a lobbyist. Yeah, that was our mistake and our bad. No, of course you would never lobby her husband, never. No, that never happened. And don't worry, Barbara Johnson assures us, quote, I was never a lobbyist. Well, that settles it then. I'm sure she was a historian. So these guys that she represents that pay her $80,000 a year, wound up getting big contracts for their clients because of her senator husband. Wild coincidence, wild coincidence. And by the way, uh, the senator says, oh, that was not an earmark uh, because it was an already existing program. Two watchdog groups, Taxpayers for Common Sense and Citizens Against Government Waste said nonsense. That's obviously an earmark. It's an increase in a budget specifically requested by a member of Congress, clearly an earmark. And by the way, they also say, Oh, no, no, it was okay because Barbara Johnson got an oral opinion from the Senate Select Committee on Ethics. I went and talked to somebody, and they said what I was doing was perfectly fine. Well, then I rest uh, very much reassured. Well, then let's go to Representative Ed Pastor, Democrat of Arizona. Well, he is pushing uh, to get federal grants to a program called Achieving a College Education at Maricopa Community Colleges. Now, he'd already gotten some money and grants for them before. And then they wind up hiring his daughter, a wonderful coincidence. And guess what happens next? They wind up getting $4 million more in grants. Hmm. Her salary over $75,000. Now look, as I read that story, and there are many others here, I think, well, you know, they could have been just working at that institution, and she's got to work somewhere, and it could be that he's helping his district. It's possible, right? Until you see what the Arizona Republic reported in 2007 that uh, Laura Passer was not the highest ranked candidate for that position, but received a salary at the top of the pay scale anyway. You might say, hey, look, that happens from time to time. Maybe it was a great interview. Until you read, the Equal Opportunity Investigator had warned college officials that, quote, we will not be able to totally defend the hiring decision. Wonderful coincidence, a guy, person we should have not necessarily hired, but hey, we got $4 million afterwards. We won't be able to defend it, but who cares who's asking questions? Not until all the way till now that the Washington Post runs this story. And of course, the Arizona Republic, to give them credit, also asks questions. So, uh, point number two, and there's dozens of these, like I said, here are point number three. From 2007 to 2009, Representative Rob Bishop, Republican of Utah, requested earmarks worth $1.5 million for Weber State University in Ogden, okay? Well, subsequent to those requests, according to the Washington Post, but before 1.25 million of them were ultimately secured, they happened to hire Congressman son, Shul Bishop, as a lobbyist. Another wonderful coincidence. So he says, I might give you this uh, earmark. They hire his son as a lobbyist, and he goes, Oh, okay, fine, here you go, $1.25 million, uh, as promised, go. Uh, but of course they didn't promise that, it's a wild coincidence. In fact, the lobbying firm hiring his son, Shul Bishop, says, no, 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 we hired him to use his dad's state connections, not his federal connections. Oh, I see, <laughs> so that makes it so much better. He's like, yeah, his dad's so connected at the state level, there's plenty of money to be had there. We didn't actually have to go and lobby him at the federal level. One, I don't even believe that. Two, that's not much of an excuse. Uh, when, uh, the, when the congressman was asked about it, 
Rob Bishop said, quote, don't worry, there's no connection. Well, oh, well then, okay, that must settle it. A another tremendous coincidence. Now we move forward. Uh, we go to Daniel Lipinski, he's a congressman from uh, Illinois, and his father used to be a congressman before him. In fact, uh, guess what happens? Uh, Daniel decides that he's going to look out for uh, his pops, uh, William Lipinski, uh, by getting the tra Chicago Transit Authority uh, contract that, uh, again, pays them uh, millions of dollars. Now, you might say, hey, listen, uh, the Chicago Transit Authority might have gotten the money anyway. And as I read these, I, I'm trying to be fair to these guys and think, like there was a case of, about uh, one of the congressmen and his wife happened to work at Rutgers, Rutgers got a contract, but Rutgers is the state school in New Jersey, that could easily happen, right? And Chicago Transit Authority, well, they're, you know, gonna get funding anyway, right? And look, but it's a specific funding that this particular congressman is asking for, it's to get them uh, many more millions of dollars. Uh, but the problem is not, the problem is that the uh, people that are lobbying for the Chicago Transit Authority have hired Capricorn Communications, which of course has hired William Lipinski. And you know how much money he's making off that? S over $766,000. Can you at least not see how this would give an air of corruption? I pay your dad over $700,000. He goes and lobbies for the Chicago Transit Authority. You conveniently earmark millions of dollars for that. Specifically from that congressman, not just generally, that congressman earmarking those funds. No, we can't have it. It's crazy. Now, here we go with the usual denials. The spokesman for the congressman says, his father does not lobby him on behalf of his clients on transportation or any other issues. In these, as in other areas, Congressman Lipinski is focused on doing what is best for his constituents. Yeah, of course he is. It's just, you think that they're paying him over $760,000 for their health? You think that they don't know that he's got political connections, including to his own son, that it's gonna make them more money? Of course, that's why they're paying him. And all this money flows out the door, right? Millions on top of millions. And even if it is small compared to the other giant parts of the budget, the defense budget, et cetera, and you think this isn't going on in the defense budget? <laughs> in spades, right? But it doesn't matter. We can't have it, man. We can't have people saying, and look, it's one thing if it's a teacher or you know, at another institution, happens to work there, et cetera. But three out of the four cases I just told you, they're specifically lobbyists for that particular thing that is getting the millions of dollars. That's got to be illegal. But unfortunately, because Congress sets its own laws, they have decided, hey, we will make it legal. Hey, isn't that convenient as well? All you have to do is if it's your, actually your wife or your husband, you have to, and it is to the, the whole point of the earmark is to make sure that they get a financial remuneration, then you have to report it. First of all, if that's the whole point of the earmark, then you shouldn't do it in the first place. Second of all, that's such a weak rule that of course it allows them to do all of this stuff. By the way, they have a different set of rules for the executive branch. The executive branch is actually much more tightly regulated. But Congress, when it comes to themselves, is, oh, no, 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 no. My son and my dad and my wife, they all got to get paid. And another famous case of this was not in the Washington Post, but it was during uh, the Minnesota uh, election between Al Franken and Norm Coleman that this story came out. Norm Coleman, former senator from Minnesota, his wife, again, getting $75,000 from a company uh, who's uh, one of the, the uh, guys running that company is a guy named Paul McKim, wound up suing one of the uh, owners of the company, and uh, that was uh, Norm Coleman's supporter, Nasser Kazamini, right? And why did he sue him? He said, you made me pay $75,000 to Norm Coleman's wife. She doesn't know a damn thing about our field, and she never even comes to work here. So it's basically a bribe to the senator, and you're trying to cover it up. And of course, Senator Coleman at the time said, outrageous, how dare they? Here's a quote from uh, Paul McKim. Lori Coleman never provided any type of services or products, nor has any other person on behalf of Hayes provided any type of services. But I'm sure that her expertise was sorely needed at that company, and that's why she was really hired. This is how political corruption works. We get robbed, they get rich.